We're more reliant on batteries than ever before. Developing better batteries is a really interesting and exciting area of research. Students will know that batteries, or cells, provide energy to a circuit. However, up until A-level, they'll largely ignore the fact that the cell itself has an internal resistance. And one of the core practicals for A-level physics is for students to find this internal resistance and the EMF of a given cell, which presents some interesting challenges for collecting good quality data. The practical is based on the relationship between this EMF, the terminal potential difference, the current through the circuit, and this internal resistance. This is the relationship. You can see that I can rearrange this to get this. So if I plot the terminal voltage against the current through the circuit, I should expect a straight line where the y-intercept gives me the EMF and the magnitude of the gradient gives me the internal resistance. So let's take a look at how that might work. Hi, Christina, you, you look ready for action? Yep, uh, ready to go. And you can give me a hand, maybe. It's a very simple circuit, as you know. Uh, I'm going to be investigating this AA cell, which I've got connected in series with a variable resistor, so that we can vary the current. This extra 10 ohm resistor limits the current generally in the circuit so that the cell doesn't get too hot, which might affect its internal resistance. Uh, this seems a bit of overkill for a 10 ohm resistor. Yes, well, it's what we had available on the day. You could just use an ordinary fixed 10 ohm resistor. Uh, you've just got to check that it's got the right power rating. OK, and it's worth getting students to think about why you're using this additional resistor and what's going on in the battery and so forth. And reminding them that everything has resistance, including our, our cell. Um, I'm also only going to connect the circuit momentarily just to take the readings to stop things getting too hot. And you're not bothering with a push switch? You could, but I've found that actually just connecting the lead like that works perfectly well. OK. We're going to be using digital multimeters, which the students do need to be able to uh, use themselves. So this is going to be measuring the current, and this one is for the terminal PD. Yeah, I've made a film about those. Oh, yes, I think I've seen that film. It's up there with your film on paint drying. Yeah, boring but popular. OK, so should we take some data? Maybe you could help me by reading one of the meters and writing down the results. OK. All right, so um, I'll read out the current if you read out the voltage. OK, and uh, if we start at this end, we've got the highest resistance, which will give us the lowest current to start with. OK. OK, so that's 40, 39.9. 1.34. 45.0. 1.32. That's 83.8. And 1.23. OK. OK. All right. You notice I, I wasn't worrying too much about taking readings at equal intervals across the rear stat. And students can sometimes obsess about getting systematic data, but really it doesn't matter that much. And I guess the important thing is to just make sure that you are getting a change in the voltage as you're moving along. Yeah, and making sure that you've covered the full range. OK, brilliant. Shall we plot graph? Let's do it. Um, so do 1.415. Uh, divided by... Um, 0.08. 0.08, yeah. yeah. And that's 2.1 ohm. Which is slightly more than I'd expect for an AA cell. But yes, I'd normally expect it to be less than an ohm. Yeah. OK, but that's what the data says. And um, the Y-intercept gives us an EMF of 1.415 volts. And that's good, because for a cheap battery of this sort, which has a stated value of 1.5 volts, that's probably within its tolerance. Yeah. So this practical seems to work very well. We've got some good data. It's fairly straightforward to do. And students will get practice of rearranging an equation so they can plot the straight line graph. But I like to push my students a bit more and give them a bit of a challenge. So I get them to find the internal resistance of one of these, a button cell. OK, I'll disconnect this one. OK, I'm just using a lump of blue tack to hold my button cell like that. OK. And I'm going to plonk this one here so it's in contact. Right. OK, and so why don't we watch what happens? Oh, so that's fluctuating much more wildly than before. That's why this is interesting, because students are going to be challenged to think about how they're going to cope with this fluctuation. 
and their measurement uncertainty of it. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. But, I mean, how are we physically going to cope with taking readings, even with the two of us working together? OK, so the issue of taking a, a simultaneous reading from both metres, I have got a solution, but for that I'm going to use the camera on my phone. OK, but isn't your battery dead? Uh, I'm going to use the camera on your phone. <laughs> okay. OK, so we're going to do pretty much the same thing that we did last mm -hmm. time. If, if you momentarily connect the circuit and, and then change the current, I'll photograph the metres and, and I'll have a, have a reading. So we'll do that ten times, yeah? Okay, doke. Okay. So we'll start at this end again. <laughs> okay. So tell me when, when, you, when you're a go. Okay, go. Yep. Go. Yep. Go. Yep. Go. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so... Now we plot a graph of no, the data. We can just plot a graph straight okay. from these readings, yeah. Okay, so I've got um, 107.0. Milliamps. Yeah, milliamps, yeah. 107. 107, yeah. 1.52. So how would you cope with the measurement uncertainty? Well, students might suggest taking repeat readings, but as you've seen, the readings fluctuate so much mm. that it'd be really hard for them to take a voltage reading at the same current again. So what I would do is repeat the whole experiment. So you get the whole run of the different currents. That's right, and I'd use the three sets of data to calculate uh, an internal resistance and an EMF, and then I'd, I'd use those values and, and look at the spread of those values and, and calculate the uncertainties in those. And find the average overall. That's right, yeah. Okay. Okay, so what have we got here? So our EMF is 3.15 Okay, which is volts. what we'd expect from a button cell like this, yeah. Okay. And the internal resistance is... So 3.15 minus 1.2. 1.20. Yeah. Over 0.13. OK, so that's an internal resistance of 15 ohms. 15 ohms. OK, so that's really different from the AA cell we measured. That's right, and that, that's why I think this allows students to see that cells are much more interesting than they might think. I hope you found that useful. In the description below, you'll find links to lots of other useful stuff like teacher's notes and worksheets. And please don't forget to subscribe so you can watch the other films in the series. OK, this doesn't feel weird at all.